Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and I have excellent news for Unreal Engine developers, and that is Unreal Engine 4.26 Preview 1 is now released. And that may not sound incredibly impressive, but truth of the matter is, the Preview 1 releases are the most important releases, other than, of course, the final 4.26 release, because in Preview 1, you get all of the new stuff that's going to be coming in 4.26 to play with. It's also not ready for prime time, not even close, but what we're going to do is take hands-on with Unreal Engine 4.26, and specifically, I'm going to show off one of the major new features, and that is the Chaos, Phys Chaos Physics and Destruction System. This is actually going to be replacing the PhysX system, and this is a new physics engine and destruction engine. I'm going to show you the very basics of getting started with it because, quite frankly, the documentation is lacking. So once I show you how to actually get started using Chaos, from there you can go ahead, and we're going to go back, we're going to look at the other things in this particular release, but I think most of us are here for the Chaos, so let there be Chaos. So how do you go about using Chaos? Well, first off, and this should be by default, previously in 4.24, 2.3, and 2.5, I know I did that in a weird order, you had to compile Unreal Engine from source. Now, thankfully with this release, uh, it's actually available in here as plugins. So you should find several different plugins and they should all already be enabled. So if they're not enabled, enable them. You'll notice a couple, Chaos Caching and the Vehicles plugin are not enabled. We're not gonna be looking at that today anyways. There's also Niagara stuff so that your particle systems can, um, so you could do something like have the building fall down and then spit out smoke, uh, smoke, smoke. Uh, for example, also got a cloth editor and cloth physics. We're not going to be looking at any of that today. We're going to look at creating probably the most simple chaos scene you could ever do. And that's because frankly, there are no tutorials showing you how to do this. So I'm going to show you that and this is where we're gonna go from. All right, so first thing you're going to need to do is create some chaos. So let's create chaos. So first thing, come in here, physics, and go to chaos solver. And really, that's all you need to do. There's a bunch of settings for this guy, but yeah. So we'll go ahead, we'll instantiate one into the scene. We've got our chaos solver. So there's things you could do here. You can change the floor height, has a floor or doesn't have a floor. That way your geometry actually, you know, hits something. Um, you've got things you can change how many iterations the solver is gonna go through. This is basically your simulation master. But now that we've got that, let's go ahead and create some geometry. So we got our geometry. And let's drop it in the world like so. All right, so there is our geometry. There is our solver. And now what we need to do is go to modes and go to fracture or hit shift F6. And then you'll see we have this nice little toolbar up here. Select your geometry, whatever you're going to be exploding or fracturing. Select it up here and then go ahead and do a new plus. And then, yep, we'll go ahead. So it's cube, geometry collection, sure. So you can have multiple things, multiple meshes all together, linked together, say, by a blueprint. And then you could uh, set a uh, geometry set on top of them. But this is probably the simplest way you could do it. So now we've got this cube, and it's got a geometry solver on it. But it doesn't have a chaos solver attached yet. So we're just going to go ahead, click the little sampler thing, and pick our chaos solver. All right, we're good to go now. You could also do a number of materials so that when it breaks up, for example, if it was brick on the outside but concrete on the inside, you could have multiple materials so that when it breaks, it looks better, way beyond what we're going to cover today. Today, all we are going to cover is, you know, getting physical here. So we got our guy up here. We're going to go ahead and hit play. There is our scene. Boom, drop down in the world. Well, that's not very destructive, but it definitely works. So go ahead, stop that. Let's move this guy up a little bit more so it's a little bit more exciting. So now still in the mode selection up here for the chaos, we're in something called the fracture editor. We pick our geometry like that guy. And here you can see we can now fracture it. So boom, I just did a uniform fracture all the way through. There's different options. You can do radial fracture, slicing and bricks and so on. But I do actually like the uniform slice. Over here, you got a lot of controls over it, so we can just switch out the, the seeds involved. Uh, here, let me just get that column over so you can see more details. Let's just expand that all out. So chance to fracture per mesh, group fracture. So you, obviously, you could have multiple meshes being controlled here. Uh, we've got the noise. We can switch out with how things operate and so on. And we've got the... Um, the Veroni uh, function that is actually controlling the fracturing here. You could switch out the uh, number of sides and it'll change out the way things fracture out. But once you're good, go ahead and click fracture. What this is going to do is basically create a bunch of chunks that are now independent all underneath our cube. So our cube has a broken up pieces. We basically just, as the name implies, fractured it. And uh, yeah, we're done. That's it. That's all you need to do. So now, boom. And Done. All right, so that is the world's quickest and simplest uh, chaos tutorial you're ever going to find, but that is the absolute basics of working with uh, the new chaos system, the new destructive system. And as you can see, it's actually quite simple. Now, obviously, you're going to want to do things like have it look good, have different materials on the inside, and so on. But 
at least you've seen the basics. Here you can get started playing with your own chaos scene. So that is the new, shining new feature in Unreal Engine 4.26. But chaos is not all that there is. So let's go take a look at the, um, I guess we'll call it the preview release notes here. And I'm just going to skim through this because there is quite a bit here. That's one thing I always have to give Unreal Engine credit for. They do a lot in each one of these releases. So we've got uh, animation updates, full body IK nodes are experimental. Uh, so if we want to do procedurally modified character poses at runtime, the full body IK solver has been added. That's pretty cool. Control rig inversion, new options have been added to control rig, forward solve, backwards solve, setup event, and backwards and forward solve. Uh, control rig branching and looping updates include added branching and conditional nodes, added support for looping, uh, added support to grouping items to support looping. Of course, chaos is in there. Chaos has ragdolls and physical animations. Uh, we got some updates on the audio. Remember back, uh, what was it, Two four point two. 4.23, they replaced the built-in system with their own audio system, so it's still getting new and new updates, including uh, parameter modulation, audio stream caching updates, dynamic speaker map controls for 2D sounds, attunation distance scaling with sound classes, and stereo delay effects for sub-mixes. We got a ton of movement in the cinematic and virtual production environment. I'm actually going to gloss over this one because a lot of this stuff isn't really game dev for the most part. This is, you know, how um, Unreal Engine is being used in uh, like the weather network and the Mandalorian and so on. They're really moving strongly into more and more real-time production stuff. Now, the nice thing is with all of these things, uh, it's not taking away from the game development side of things. So e even though you're seeing a lot of improvements for movie rendering, sequencing, uh, and then OCIO color support, uh, and then DMX going to give it to you, all of those things out there aren't taking it away from uh, you know what us game developers are doing. The nice thing about them having a huge team is it doesn't kill us. But a number of improvements across the board for people using Unreal Engine for films. Uh, core iteration and cooking updates, memory insights. Uh, we added memory insights to help developers better understand how their, um, their work impacts performance and edge and behavior. Garbage collection improvements, Zen loader beta, next generation consoles will have improved load times, a new input output mechanism that allows, that offers a low overhead interface for data access. That's actually kind of cool because that is like probably the biggest new feature for uh, PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox is that they're coming with really, really fast SSD drives. Uh, Datasmith updates. Again, Datasmith generally isn't used for game development. This is more for people doing uh, previs and engineering type work, uh, but we have had improvements there. Uh, USD stage improvement. Improvements, LiDAR improvements, LiDAR being a 3D scanning technology. So again, not really that important for game developers. Uh, enhanced input experimental, a streamlined but highly configurable input handling system, runtime remapping, and um, complex customizable trigger rules. That one is going to be quite nice in the end. It's basically a new input handling system, but it's experimental. So very, very early and may not make the cut. This one's actually kind of nice too. For mobile, you got desktop forward and deferred rendering for mobile. It's in beta for iOS and experimental for Android. Um, so, it's, oh, and that's only for Androids using Vulkan. Uh, Windows Metal Shader Compiler. So Windows users can now compile shaders for like, iOS projects. So assuming that uh, Unreal Engine continues to be supported on iOS. Screw you, Apple. Uh, we got iOS TV, uh, gamepad support, uh, mobile rendering improvements, uh, several of them there. So basically mobile rendering just got better and you've got forward and deferred rendering from desktop on mobile, which could be really nice going forward. But uh, again, experimental at this point in time. Physics, we kind of got into some of that. I showed you how this stuff works, but the complete new physics system in this particular update. So there's going to be a lot of physics-y stuff. And of course, there's a vehicle system in there that's experimental. And then there's a cloth system in there that is ultimately replacing the physics cloth. Um, we got uh, volumetric cloud actors provide a material-driven real-time cloud rendering system and sky atmosphere improvements. Uh, so it was added in 4.23, and they just kind of keep making it better. All the details that they've added to their sky system here. Real-time skylight capture now has real-time capture mode when set to movable. It, uh, it improves on and is faster than the sky recapture blueprint node by performing all computations on the GPU without any CPU readback. Um, and we've got the sun sky plugin actor has been updated to take advantage of the new stuff that has happened there. Uh, water systems. So this one kind of is a little bit funny. I did a thing on the last giveaway. There's the UIWS system that they put in place. Um, that was a give, one of their giveaways last month. It was like $350 or $400. It allows you to do things like create streams and flows of bodies of water that are physically interactive and so on. Well, they have their experimental system from Fortnite is now available in Unreal Engine. At purely, again, experimental. So that you is, is definitely the way to go right now. But this new system allows you to create ocean rivers and lakes that seamlessly blend from one to another and with the terrain uh, it uses 
uses an editable spline system to generate water tiles that work with the landscape terrain. So in some ways, actually, that's how UIWS also works. And by the way, that giveaway lasts for the rest of the month. So you've got about five or six days left to get that if you haven't already grabbed this month's free stuff. Uh, so we've also got, you have to enable the water and landmass plugin. At the same time, the hair and fur simulations were improved. Ray tracing has been improved, including extended translucency support, support for thin translucency shading model, subsurface improvements, two-sided, damn you, foliage, uh, support in RTGI, path tracing improvements, uh, material layering system, Gen 5 temporal anti-aliasing is experimental. Um, this is anti-aliasing uh, over time. Uh, this also generally is what makes uh, the Unreal Engine editor flicker like mad when it's enabled. So hopefully that gets fixed there as well. Uh, the particle system Niagara got some improvements. XR or you know, VR, AR all kind of put together has gotten some improvements as well, including OpenXR integration with DirectX 12 in beta, collaborative viewer template improvements, uh, Microsoft Azure spatial anchors, uh, AR unification, so common functionality was identified across AR and consolidated into a general AR tool suite. Uh, AR Core SDK update, AR Kit SDK, so that one is Google, that one is iOS, basically been updated. Magic Leap update, and they deprecated the Oculus Go uh, and touchpad input and three, three degrees of freedom. So this is actually going to cut off some of the older headsets. Uh, I think that would be the, all of them, the Daydream VR, Google Cardboard, etc. Those have all been deprecated. And then finally, desktop Linux, there was a quality of life update. Developers can now uh, build the Linux SDK using Clang or CLang 10.0.1 uh, release. So that is it. Uh, pretty, pretty good update on the whole. Again, a lot of stuff in the middle here, the cinematic stuff and the data smith stuff you guys aren't going to really care about it. even if you take that out though there is a ton of new stuff in here to enjoy and again probably the star of the show is the new chaos destructive en engine and physics solver and hopefully that little getting started tutorial at least gives you the basics um you can obviously want to tweak things so that when they're when they're done settling they mind you this is such a common physics engine system there's always you got to just kind of tweak it till it's right until it's not you know, over simulating and then bouncing off of each other. So anyways, that is Unreal Engine 4.26 Preview 1. Gives us a good idea of what to expect in that release. Also, we got a brand new swath of experimental stuff. So some interesting stuff in there for sure. But the biggest thing, at least in my opinion, Chaos is now live. So you want to check it out. No more having to build the edge from scratch. Uh, do check that out and let me know what you think. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.